So now we're going to be looking at solving equations using multiplying and dividing. So the idea is we don't no longer have green guys if we're looking at algebra blocks. And we have a number being multiplied with the x or a number dividing the x. And so um, when we look at that, you know, if we're looking at this problem right here, a lot of people look at this 2x as being stuck with the x, like they're, they're one thing and you can't separate them. However, what this really means is that we have two groups of x. So if we're looking at algebra box, it means that I have two x's, and then on the other side, I have six green guys. And so our idea is always the same thing when we're solving an equation. I'm trying to figure out what one of these x's is, but on this side I have two of them. So what I want to do is I want to split them up. I want to split it into two groups. So I have one group and two groups on that side. So then the other side, I want to split it into two groups. So if I do this, I have two groups, right? So if I, if I circle three in each group, I have the same number in each group, I split them up exactly evenly, and now I can see that one x equals one group of three. So that must mean that x equals three. Okay, so now what does that mean on our equation? See, in our equation we have 2x equals 6. So what did we do here? Did we add, subtract, multiply, or divide? And if you think about it, when you split things up into equal groups, like we did here, we split these up into equal groups, what we're doing is we're dividing. And so that kind of makes sense, because if we think about multiplying, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So if I want to undo multiplying, I'm going to divide. So on this equation, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to divide by 2. But again, I have to keep it equal on both sides. I have to keep it balanced, so I have to divide the other side by 2 also. So then on the left, the 2's cancel out. Now we're not talking zero pairs, because zero pairs only happens with adding or subtracting. But I do know that 2 divided by 2 is 1, and so I just get an x there. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3, which would make sense, because one group was three green guys. Okay, let's look at another problem. So here I have four x's. So if I had my picture, I'd have four x's. On the other side, I have eight units. Okay, so I want to split it up into four groups this time because there's four x's. So when I split it up into four groups, one, two, three, four groups, over here I have to split it up into four equal groups. Okay, so when I'm splitting up into four groups, I'm dividing by four. I'm dividing it into four groups. So I divide both sides by four. So my fours cancel out. I just get an x equals. And my eight divided by four gives me two, which makes sense because I have two in a group up there. So again, when our problem starts with a multiplication here, I want to do the exact opposite. I want to divide. So I'm doing the inverse operation. I'm dividing by four on both sides to keep it balanced out because I still have a, a balance scale here. Okay, now this problem is a little bit different because I already have a divide. Remember, a fraction is really division. So I have x divided by 2. And so um, if I'm looking at the algebra blocks, okay, so I have on the, both sides, I have this, this um, plus and minus idea. And on this problem, I have x divided by 2 equals 3. Now the 3 is easy to do because I just put 3 over here. But what about the x divided by 2? In class we talked about that I'm going to take that, that block that I have and I'm only going to put half of it inside of this, um, this block here, this, this um, box that I have for the plus. So half of the x equals 3. So half of this x equals these 3. So the question is, what does this half equal? Well, if the bottom half equals 3, the top half has to equal 3 also, so I'm going to put 3 up here outside of it. So really, if I'm looking at it, 1 full x equals 6. So what am I doing here? I had half of an x, and I made another half of an x, right? I had a half of an x here, and I made another half of the x. I doubled it. I multiplied it. Um, and I created another group of that. And so ultimately when I'm looking at my equation here, I have x divided by 2. So again, we're looking at the opposite operation, um, the inverse operation, I should say. And so if I'm dividing by 2 in my problem, the opposite or the inverse of that is multiplying by 2. And I multiplied by 2 and multiplied by 2, which is what happened here. I doubled how much I had. And so um, x divided by 2 times 2, the 2s are going to cancel out. So I just get the x, and 3 times 2 is Six, which makes sense because over here on my picture, one whole x equals all six of those because I had two groups of three in the end, which is what this says, two groups of three. So let's look at another one. Here I have x divided into four parts. So in order to make it a whole x, remember this is just a fourth of an x. So if we look at it, if this is my x, um, I only have a fourth of it. 
there's still three fourths left, right? And so if I want to get a full one, I have to have one, two, three, four groups of that. So I have to multiply it by four so that I have four groups to make it a whole x. But I also have this negative here, so I'm going to include that negative with the negative four because I don't want to know what a negative x equals. And if I didn't multiply by this negative here, this would end up being a negative x. I want to know what a positive x equals, so I'm going to get rid of the negative because when you have a negative here divided by a negative, they're going to cancel out to be positive. So now these all cancel out to be a positive, and I just get an x because they canceled each other out. And six times negative four is negative 24. And so that's what I would have. Each one of these has six units on it. And so I end up with 24 of them. And of course, there's the negative to be dealt with, but um, we all know that a positive times a negative is a negative. So um, one full x is tw negative 24. And one last problem. Here I have a 2 thirds. So I have a fraction. I have a fraction being multiplied times the x. Now, we talked about that if you're multiplying here, to get rid of it, you need to divide. But if I divide, I'm dividing by a fraction. And uh, what do we do? When we divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to go straight to multiplying by the reciprocal. That way, I don't have as much writing to do. And on this side, remember, I have to keep it balanced because this is a balance scale. And I want to do the same thing on both sides. So if I, if I multiply by 3 halves here, I have to multiply by 3 halves over here. Now over here, what's nice is the 2s are going to cancel and the 3s are going to cancel. And so I just have x equals. On this side, I'm going to make the 8 over 1, so that's a fraction 2. And let's see, 2 goes into 8 four times. So now I have 4 times 3, that's 12, over 1, so it's just 12. So x equals 12. So again, when you have a problem where you're multiplying by a fraction, instead of dividing by that fraction, I mean you can, but then you're going to have more work for yourself, you could just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal on both sides.